Good morning, everyone. Um, so yeah, as Professor Bruna says, this is my this is a piece of work I did towards the end of my PhD. And uh, if I there we go, um, so we're so we're looking at um, smart inverter control. Hopefully, it will be quite complementary to the stuff that we've heard, heard earlier this morning. It's sort of looking at this sort of tertiary control rather than looking at um, voltage transients and um, voltage stability. It's more looking at what do we do with the set points for reactive power controllers and taps. Um, so there's a whole bunch of devices, as we all know, uh, which in terms of domestic scale loads are relatively large. So there's solar PV, electric vehicles, battery energy storage systems, and so on and so forth. And if you go to IEEE 1547, there's a whole bunch of methods that you can that are described in there for what you could do with the reactive power of those inverters. Um, and yeah, in this work, as I say, we're looking at what should you do if you could control them, um, could control them perfectly, essentially. Is there something better that you could do if you were to control them the whole time to sort of have the grid performing optimally? And to this point, uh, the sort of it, the, the interesting thing that we're trying to look at in this particular presentation is that on the one hand, if you sink reactive power, then you increase the line losses, but you tend to reduce demand. If you assume that demand reduces with voltage, which there's lots of stuff on that, um, lots of experimental evidence that suggests that that is, that is true. And with that in mind, we sort of come to the research question, which is to say, to what extent can reactive power from domestic scale inverters reduce total feeder demand? Or on a sort of high level, we're saying, what should we do with domestic scale reactive power controls sort of most of the time in distribution networks? And compared to previous works, so there's people who have done stuff in the past on this. There's a few references which are in the paper, which I think are, are quite relevant to this question. And the sort of thing that we do here is that we, we ignore time coupling. Um, and this, the reason that this is particularly nice is or the, the reason we chose this approach is that it means that you can really dig into this tension between line losses and demand without having to um, either relax the inter integer constraints on your taps, um, which basically makes the, the, the optimization problem tractable without having to do all of these complicated decompositions to make, to make this work. To, I should say, because you have time coupling, you want to reduce the number of taps tap changes um, over the course of a day or so. So we use the one of these unbalanced multiphase linearized models. Uh, there's a lot of work on this at the moment and our control vector is in terms of reactive power and the tap turns ratio. And compared to sort of most linearized models, we have this voltage dependent uh, demand. So this sort of CVR coefficient we reckon might be about 0.6 is sort of perhaps a bit high, but sort of what you might expect for a sort of long-term value of course, for short term, sort of transients, this value is higher because you have uh, thermostatic impedance loads, but this is sort of what we thought might be around, about right. And there's, there's papers which use this value. Um, there are three stages. We, we don't have the most elegant linearization, to be honest. Uh, if, if we, we, we kind of knock this together. Um, if, I, I would say use a Jacobian if you can, it tends to work a bit better. Um, so so the, 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 we sort of have three steps. So we first assume that we have a um, everything is a constant power injection, and then we uh, then go and use this model to linearize in terms of the power injections to sort of correct for this voltage sensitivity, um, which gives us this these curves on the right, which is basically saying that even though we use this sort of hack, if you like, it works pretty well when we first, without that cor correction term, you get sort of quite a big kink in the Jacobian, which means that it, it starts to become quite inaccurate. And then in terms of Calculating sensitivity taps, we just um, change them up and down, and that's pretty quick. Um, and with the complex voltages, you can calculate everything else we need. And then the sort of final thing which people often ignore is that they don't look at inverter losses, which in domestic scale inverters actually tends to be quite big, as we'll come on to see. Uh, we assume a 4 kVA inverter with about 2.4 kVar capability. So we look at sort of two different types of network variation. On the first, first instance, we look at some networks without taps and some networks with taps. And the reason that this is important is because if you have taps, then you can do the sort of CVR thing properly, which is to say that normal CVRs, you put a capacitor bank in, you step the voltage down, and then your demands across the whole circuit um, are reduced. If you have tap controls, you can basically do that with your inverters. You can inject a small amount of reactive power on those buses which is sort of on the edge so that you can step the tap down. Um, and then most of the other inverters, um, you're not changing the reactive power too much. 
And then we also have uh, a bunch of circuits without tap controls. And this is sort of that, that thing that I was talking about in the first instance, where you have this trade-off between losses increasing and load demand decreasing. So you sort of look at thinking about what, what, what is the dominant thing there? We sort of we, we look at that a little bit. And the second sort of th uh, thing that we look at a little bit is we compare US and European style circuits. So I've highlighted here, here the 123 bus circuit. So you can see there's a bunch of voltage regulators is what these red dots are. And we also look, look at this. This is sort of an augmented IEEE circuit where we stitch together the European low voltage test feeder is here, along with all the other feeders from that circuit, because they're all fed through a common transformer. And this particular circuit I highlight because we, we do two versions of it. We do a version without a regulator here, which is what, what is sort of there in the real world. And then we also do a version where we, uh, a regulator is put here which there, there, have, there have been tests to sort of think about doing that. And it, it might happen, perhaps it's unlikely, but it means that we can compare this sort of with TAP and with that, without TAP controls quite well. So with that, with all of that together, we get to our sort of full optimization. So we're minimizing, this has got uh, load, it's got losses and inverter, network losses and inverter losses. Then we, we're subject to current constraints, voltage constraints, got some con control constraints. And as I say, we keep TAPs as integer variables. And to explore the problem, uh, we have a bunch of different optimization setups. So the first uh, setup we have is we just solve this optimization problem. We chuck this into Mosaic and it solves it. It's pretty, it's not too bad. We only have a few integer variables um, and it, it, it works basically. Um, and the main counterfactual that we compare against is what we call nominal control, which is that we have the same um, objective function. So we have this, but we don't have any inverter control. So this is what you would do if you just, were just controlling your taps. Secondly, we have two cases where we only look at load or loss minimization within the objective function. So this is saying, could we have just minimized the load or minimized the loss? Because this comes out in papers quite a lot, that people will just do one or the other. And then finally, we look at a, a case where we say, do we need to control all the inverters separately? So in, in this particular case, we just have a simple, we'll, we'll see a figure on this shortly. We assume that each of the phases of our multi-phase circuit, all of the inverters on those phases are constrained to export the same key, which makes this even faster than you only have a few control variables. So here's a sort of first result for the IEEE 123 bus. So if we look at this top figure, we've got the bus index and we've got the, the black line to the voltage constraints. The LV constraints are different from the MV constraints, which is why we have these lines here. First thing you can see, the base voltage uh, solution is, is, is conservative insofar as we, we, you, you, there is a large voltage drop that's allowed. I mean, there's obviously reasons that that's nice to have, but if you want to just be minimizing the objective that we talked about earlier, then this sort of is, is, is kind of high. And so when you come along and you apply our optimization, then you get the blue circles, which you can kind of see at the back. And these are the controls that that uh, quadratic program um, output so taps are here at the end you can see the taps have all stepped down a lot you can see at the top of the feeder this is this is why we have this sort of big voltage drop up here and then you can see the the reactive power the injection from each of the individual phases so you can see there's quite a good correlation between the phases so that was to some extent the inspiration for the that per phase control was just the observation that it seems to do this um, quite a lot and then finally if we take that quadratic program solution Chuck it into OpenDSS, we get the orange dots, and you can see that the, the accuracy of the quadratic program is very good. Um, and I mean, th this is partly because we're not really injecting that much reactive power, only doing this sort of plus minus two K var. So it's sort of around that optimization solution, that sort of linearization solution, we're not going too far. And so it works, it sort of consistently works pretty well. So in terms of how does it do in terms of reducing total feeder power, I'll just quickly talk through how to read this figure. So, 100, so we're, we're plotting the ratio of the total feeder power at the optimal control compared to having no control. So at 100%, that's sort of that base solution, that high voltage solution that we were looking at earlier. So in terms of, if we just look at this first one, the nominal control is sort of that main counterfactual, as I say. So this is just controlling the taps. You can see that the demand drops sort of three, three and a bit percent because we're quite high, uh, have quite a high demand, a high voltage on that circuit. You can see that the, the full control, there isn't actually that much difference, to be honest. There's sort of, this is maybe 0.1 or 0.2%, and that's kind of repeated at all the different loading points. 
interesting points to note though is that, the, that this sort of phase control where you're only controlling per phase we do pretty well um, whereas if you minimize just based on losses you do much worse um, and that's you can kind of imagine that this is because if you're minimizing losses then you want to have high voltages so you end up with this sort of high voltage solution and the reactive power is then um, correcting the power factor essentially so most of the benefits can be uh, realized by taps only using this sort of nominal control full invert this sort of uh, what was it here? Uh, full full uh, full control is sort of modest benefits so we, yeah this is much less than one percent um, and sensitivity analysis sort of shows that there's reasonable consistency at different demand points so then we go and we calculate the same for all seven circuits so again this is that same figure we're at 60 percent demand and 100% is where we were. So this is our circuit that we were looking at just then. So we have these two sets we have with tap control and without tap control. So from this, we can see that again, we're doing it it's pretty modest in terms of benefits. So the, the maximum we put, we got the actual values on the next slide is about half a percent, um, which is for this circuit five. Loss or load reduction, which is these purple and orange, uh, purple and green, both can make the system worse. So for this circuit five, if you minimize by losses, then your losses, your, your total feed of power goes up by almost a percent. Uh, if whereas for the European low voltage test feeder, if you minimize the load, then your, your, your power shoots up. And that's the same for the this regulated version where you have a tap. So the, these two match, but this one's got this tap that I was telling you about earlier. Um, and finally, if you do tap control, you can see that this sort of nominal um, benefit, so, so these don't have taps, which is why nominal is always sat at 100, but when you have taps, then nominal uh, reduces to uh, a couple of percent in all of the circuits. Um, and to be honest, that, that's sort of showing most of the benefits that you can see if this sort of conservation voltage reduction. So final set of results. Um, so this table, I'll just quickly talk you through. So we're, we're, we, we've uh, put out the, the, the load reduction, which is sort of the difference between 100% and those, the tops of those uh, charts that I was telling, showing you earlier. And then also what I've called here the control efficacy or utilization or something like that, which is the saving in watts compared to the amount of reactive power that you've actually had to put in. And we're doing sensitivity analysis on the inverter losses. So in the paper, we, we talk, there's these sort of three models that we have. We have no inverter losses, we have High, uh, low inverter losses and we have high inverter losses and we sort of say what the coefficients are. So the first thing to, say, to notice is that when you don't have uh, tap controls then the inverter losses, loss coefficients make a big difference. So you can see here for circuit five you go from 1% to 0.5% to 0.46% or so. so. This is sort of a 50% reduction just by having this these inverter losses and that's, that's essentially saying that the, the lossiness of the inverters is, is as important as the lossiness of the, um, the, lossiness of the uh, network itself. Secondly, some networks, this is, this is like in the noise. You, you just shouldn't do this on some circuits. It will, no, there are no benefits. Um, and, so, and finally, um, if we look at these numbers and compare it to these numbers, so this is this control efficacy, you can see that when you have taps, you, you utilize that reactive power much better. And that's, as I say, you can sort of see that particularly on this European low voltage feeder where we go from about 6% to over 30, sorry, six watts per kVar to over 30 watts per kVar. And in this K1 circuit, we're over hundred. Um, so this is saying that actually maybe that reactive power is quite useful. Maybe you don't need all of the circuits doing the reactive power control. Maybe just a few of them might work or something like that. Um, but this sort of this trend, e even though the load reduction is not not necessarily that much greater than these circuits in here, you're using much less reactive power to get there. So to conclude, um, to what extent can reactive power from domestic scale inverters reduce total feed of demand? So we reckon about 0.5% might be might be about right, and that depends significantly on the circuit that you're looking at. Secondly, the loss coefficients can reduce these benefits by perhaps 50%, and finally. Simplified control schemes could show promise, um, but we would say you need a sensible objective function. So just minimizing load or losses is unlikely to give you the, give you the, 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 the full benefits. And so, as I say, impacts of time coupling, maybe, maybe there is some reason we need to do time coupling and then 
sort of more more control schemes, I suppose, more of the problems that were talked about earlier in this in this session, presumably need to be considered at some point. So, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Matt, for keeping the time and for the very interesting work. Uh, it seems that most all papers in this session deal of similar subjects, which is good, and uh, we'll all benefit by uh, looking at each other's work. Uh, for the time being, uh, I see no question uh, from the floor. So let me ask you one question first, uh, while people can go on and uh, type on the Q&A. Uh, your objective seems to be the uh, minimization of uh, active consumption in the feeder, which is some kind of, um, you consider it some type of, uh, um, uh, cons uh, conservation voltage reduction or this type of thing, I mean, to, to lower the load on the system? Why, why do you want to, to lower the feeder load? Uh, so, so for the long term, um, which is the sort of most of the time, then it's purely for um, energy reduction, if you like. That was kind of the, the motivation, yeah, but okay. you do hear these. So some of the references that I, was, that I sort of um, put in talk about this sort of peak demand reduction if you're in a sort of stress condition then um, for example okay. in the UK they have this um, voltage reduction across the whole transmission system um, so that's sort of a, uh, the, the other application is that they're the, yeah they're, they're, they're the kind of two applications I mean 0.5 percent maybe this is okay I mean if, if the whole of yeah. the US demand was reduced then yeah. yeah it's interesting because in the other papers we tried to to also play with the active consumption, but also with the reactive injection. So you, you, your, in your case, the, let's say the uh, objective function is simpler, but it can change. Uh, I see a question from Patrick uh, Pansietti C from uh, RTE. Uh, do you think uh, that network configuration could be that net network configuration could be useful? The one that we are proposing, I mean. Um. I suppose it could be insofar as if you have sections of the network which are particularly weak and you could shift them over to other parts of, of the circuit at certain times, um, then maybe it might be the case. Um, I, I would say I'm not a, an expert on reconfiguration, um, but my understanding is that often the, they're quite optimized already in those sorts of settings. You kind of have the, the, the something reasonable um, going already. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it could make a difference, I suppose. Um, and the, the nice thing about network reconfiguration is that well, you only change a few elements in your admittance matrix, so it's not actually too hard to update your um, update your optimization to try those sorts of things. Um, so, yeah, so it's a, it, it could make a difference. Um, I, I can't say I've thought about it a huge amount. Um, okay, this is one more degree of freedom to think of yeah, while yeah. following your objective. Uh, 